Ron, how did the, the election in Virginia, surprise election, and what happened in New Jersey, how do you think that affected the, the vote we finally saw on the first half, of, well, not a half, but on the infrastructure, the pure bipartisan infrastructure bill? Who, who did that um, sort of push to support this? I think, I think both the moderates and the Democrats and maybe some of the swing state Republicans both said, I better do this, given what happened in Virginia. Good morning. You're absolutely right. I think this is a wake-up call to the moderates of both parties who said that our constituents sent us to Washington, to D.C. to get something accomplished, and we need to get this done. We can't really argue with roads and bridges and infrastructure. We can find a bipartisan solution to many of the problems that vex us. So I think that's what got the first, the physical infrastructure bill off the sort of you know dust heap, if you will, and uh, onto the president's desk. But the second one, the human infrastructure bill, I think it might very well be, as you said at the outset, a bridge too far. The same factors that, that maybe uh, pushed along the, the yay votes on, on this bill, I would think some of those factors that in Virginia and elsewhere, that that could make um, maybe some moderate Democrats like Manchin, I think it could embolden not just Manchin and Cinema, but some that we haven't heard from that were afraid to really uh, speak too loudly about an opposition to this $4 trillion uh, spending plan. Absolutely. You look at someone like Josh Gotthammer out in Bergen County, New Jersey, uh, who heads a, a group of the, the Problem Solvers Caucus in the House of Representatives, probably about 18 to 20 Democrats who look at what happened in Virginia, look at what happened in New Jersey, look at what happened in Texas last Tuesday, and said, you know what? I hear you loud and clear. We can't vote for this sort of monstrosity of a bill when clearly constituencies across the country are saying you're spending too much, you're trying to do too much too quickly, inflation's going up, gas prices are going up, and my confidence in the government's ability to do their job is very much going down. Do you think that the polls, that, that the administration's numbers, uh, the, the, I saw a recent one, 38 percent, which is the lowest I've seen, I think it was a USA Today poll for Biden. Um, that doesn't include either the, the Pfizer pill, which is obviously not the president's doing, but it's certainly going to help, I think, in terms of, um, of sentiment. doesn't include the, the jobs numbers we saw on Friday, and it doesn't include the infrastructure bill being passed. Are you expecting a bounce, and what, will that help the, uh, the big bill, do you well, think? At this, at this juncture, the president's numbers can only go up. I mean, I don't think they're going to go further uh, beneath 38 percent where we're looking at right now. Yeah, so I do think that having a oral ability to take a uh, COVID vaccine will help. Uh, I think if people dig beneath the numbers, unemployment's going down because, of course, more people aren't looking for work and more people aren't seeking to enter the workforce. I, I don't think that's kind of a, a mitigating factor that goes against the president saying, look how great we're doing. But ultimately, I think it's a question of confidence. The American people have confidence in this administration, do they have confidence in this Congress to do the sorts of initiatives to pass the sort of legislation that addresses their kitchen top needs? Again, how can we make sure that milk, for goodness sake, is skyrocketing in price? How do we make sure that we can get bacon, fruit on the table? Politicians in D.C., I think, are so fixated on their dream list, they're not looking at the wish list of what American people have to put on the table every single day. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.